did this last night. So my white card is Overwhelmed. Um, and it kind of ties in with my black card as well, which is Optimistic. They're both the same story. So I finished my full-time job that I had last week. Um, so this week is my first week as a self, fully self-employed uh, person. So I'm optimistic that it's all going to go well and put a lot of work into it. But towards the end of last week, when I realized that uh, for the first time since 2011, I won't be in a full-time, full-paid job, uh, it was a little bit overwhelming. So I had a little, uh, little moment of panic there. But then I was optimistic and it all came right. So this week we're happy. So I first got into the, the whole world of, of the deck and emotional culture deck um, it's a couple of years back now, probably about uh, three years ago. Uh, a former colleague of mine down in Wellington um, told me about this guy he knew um, and this fun pack of cards that he was playing with, uh, which was really good for some team building exercises. And I was doing a lot of work with teams at the time. Um, so I jumped online and, and bought a pack. Really enjoyed playing with them. Um, so signed myself up to the master class and uh, just kept going really, um, playing the cards with the teams and, and getting some really good results. So in terms of organising my day, I am a list person. So I really like having lists. Um, I like to use um, a list to plan out what I'm going to do for the day um, and set my priorities first. Um, then I like to try and crack through them in order. I like to organise my day into chunks of time, so normally like an hour, 45 minutes, um, and then just sink into a task. So take something higher on the priority list, sink into that for an hour, see if I can knock it out, take a break, recharge, get into the next hour block, and then just break up the day that way. Uh, <laughs> I find that I do more work in the evening after I've put the kids down, um, but I'm not necessarily the most productive in the evening, uh, probably more productive about mid-morning. So I've found my happy place to work now in my home office. So during COVID, I um, was forced to change up some workspace. Um, so turn my back bedroom into an office. It's got everything I need, got my dual screens, got all my toys. And um, it's far enough in the house that it doesn't have all the noise on the kids. So that's my ideal place to work now. Um, and relaxing, uh, either the forest or the beach. So taking the kids mountain biking through the forest or for a swim in the sea. Definitely the best place to relax. My favourite technology, um, I love my Microsoft Surface. Um, I've had one for years and I do everything with it. It does everything I need it to do, uh, syncs to everything, uh, and I plan my whole life on it, so I'll be lost without it. Um, and I hate to say it, but also my phone. Um, as much as everyone's overly reliant on them now, uh, again, I think I'll be pretty lost in my life without my phone now. Uh, I've got a couple of other toys and games that um, actually Jeremy has got me onto. Um, one of them is the Icebreaker Pack. Um, so another really good game when you've got a team, especially if they don't know each other very well. Um, it's random cards that ask questions um, and they get to go around in a group and just ask, not overly personal, but questions they might not think to ask uh, to get to know each other. So it's a really good way to break the ice. Um, and there's also Un Uncomfortable is Okay. Um, which is great for when you're stuck trying to make a decision uh, and it gives you some really good uh, tips and prompts um, for different ways to make decisions um, when you're stuck. The first thing that drew me to the ECD, um, I'm a marketer's dream, so it was pretty and it was uh, really nice to play with. So the tactility and the, and the presentation of it was the first thing that drew me to it. Um, and once I got into playing with it and realised the applications for the teams that I was working with, uh, I just got deeper and deeper, got more decks and, and found more success with the team, so it was uh, pretty easy to keep using. And the most powerful part of using the ECD is it, it gives people prompts that they wouldn't have thought of before. So everyone's got these deep emotions and got these feelings that they can't define. Um, and it's just a simple tool that they can flick through in their own time. It's tactile so they can play with it and begin thinking while they're playing and talking. Um, and it just allows them to get deeper into what they're feeling. And then they find that card that resonates and you see that look in their eye when they've come to that realization. Um, and then they get really excited when you start building strategies around dealing with it. 
I think for me the most rewarding thing about using the ECD is when people have that moment of realization, when they've had that emotion or feeling going on for some time and they find that card that resonates with them and you can see that look in their face and you can then work with them to hone in on that specific feeling and build strategies around it. And it's, it's a really satisfying feeling. Um, so I've been using the, the deck with quite a, a broad range of different groups. Um, I've had some great success using it with uh, frontline emergency workers. So we've been using it in the fire service, uh, fire and emergency New Zealand, and using it with different teams within there with their leaders, brigade leaders and volunteer brigades. Um, I've also been using it recently with the Red Cross, with their disaster welfare support team. Um, so they're the go guys that go out and actually help um, during a disaster, um, doing a lot of PFA, um, psychological first aid type stuff. So again, they really resonated with the concept of the cards and had good conversations. Um, I've also been using it to great success with schools. Um, so with groups of teachers, looking at how they uh, interact with learners and also with students, so with kids, um, helping them to define their emotions and find strategies to deal with it. So a broad range of people. I've had some, some really positive, powerful situations with the ECD. Um, I won't name the, the organisation, but I did, a, uh, did a, a team session with a bunch of older males, and um, a couple of them were pretty anti-talking about feelings, which I respected. Um, and we kept playing the game with the ones who were interested and one or two started loosening up towards the end and then um, at the end one of the guys actually came up and asked if he could take a pack home, borrow one, um, because he was finally able to show his wife that he did actually have emotions and feelings and it was actually a huge step for him so that was a, a really powerful breakthrough. Um, I think one of the deepest sort of breakthroughs I had was with um, with a team I had a few years ago. It was a team that I managed directly. Um, and it was one of the first teams I used the cards with. And we were doing a, a weekly retro. And I deliberately didn't frame it too tightly. So I said, you know, think back, what are you feeling over the last couple of weeks? And didn't necessarily make it about work either. Um, and everyone around the table went really deep really deep, like tears and stuff. Um, but it was really powerful because the things that each member of the team realized about other members of the team provided them a better opportunity to support those members. Um, they had a better understanding. It built trust really quickly because they opened up. Um, and then to see that team perform more and more highly going forward because they were so much closer was, uh, was, was quite amazing. Uh, anyone who is considering to be an elephant rider, I'd say go for it. Um, I think the world needs more people having these conversations. Um, teams need more people leading them who have empathy and who understand emotions. Um, and leaders need more support in doing that. Um, so anywhere where a company can embrace this tool and can have people out there practicing it, definitely go for it. So if I'm doing a one-on-one -on -one with a leader as an introduction, um, I definitely introduce it as a tactile game uh, and talk up the advantages of people being able to touch and feel it. Um, we talk about the fact that it does go a little bit deeper because it's talking about emotions but that people feel safe because you can almost hide behind the cards. I think holding the cards and the tactility of them allows you to be vulnerable without putting the vulnerability out there. Um, so we let the leaders know that's not likely to happen um, but then really just let them loose. And, and 99 times out of 100, once the leader started playing with it, they get hooked and then they want to keep going with it. So, so in terms of measuring success with um, the workshops I do with the ECD, um, the first stage I'll look at is the output from the workshop. So if we've got some good deep answers in the canvas um, that people have actually put some thought into um, and there's some good strategies there and some good ideas to take away, and that shows that people have participated in the actual workshop. Um, in terms of ongoing um, measures of success, when I do um, kind of touch base with the, the teams later on, um, I'll look at how well they're still able to articulate what they want to achieve from it, how well they're implementing it, whether they're actually walking the talk or if they've just kind of let it slip. Um, 
and that shows you if they've been successful. So I've actually got two cards that are my favourite from the pack. Um, the first one is Restless. I love the fact that it exists in both the black and the white pile, um, and it creates some really interesting conversations as people are going through it, because people quickly identify it's in both and they want to know why, um, and then you can have some really good conversations with them about what that means from a positive and a you know, less desirable sense. Um, and the other word that um, is, is really powerful is overwhelmed. Um, I'm finding the more sessions, the more people are becoming busy in their life and the more they're taking on responsibility, the more often that word's coming out and then really hitting a nerve with people and resonating. Um, and I'm finding that's coming out often and then we're able to build some really cool strategies for them to deal with that sense of being overwhelmed. So, so the online masterclass is great. Um, you get access to a whole bunch of videos of Jeremy actually out there delivering workshops. Um, so really quickly you get to develop your own confidence in how to deliver um, and the best way of delivering. Um, when you see him delivering, you see people interacting. Um, and if you can copy that as you start, then you're going to be delivering really good workshops. Um, I like that it was study at your own pace. So I was able to do it in the evening after I put the kids to bed. 